Trevor Moad is one of the top consultants in the field of mental conditioning and sports psychology. He's worked with top programs like Alabama and Florida State. He's worked with some of the best NFL players, including Russell Wilson. And I'm so glad to have you on, Trevor, because we hear, especially at this time in the postseason, top athletes always say that the difference in winning and losing can be mental toughness. How do you describe what mental toughness really means? You know, I think mental toughness is really how do we explain situations to ourselves When good things are happening, how do we explain that to ourselves? Do we understand why they're happening and are we focused on c continuing to keep them happening? And I think when bad things happen, how do we explain those things and can we keep them temporary, understand why they happen and be able to move forward? So how important then is, is positive thinking in all of this? Because I know Russell Wilson, obviously we know he's a very positive guy. We've seen Tom Brady there, very positive no matter the circumstances on the sidelines. But why is that so critical? Well, positive thinking is really the gateway. I, I don't know if positive thinking works all the time, but I do know that negative thinking does. And it works negatively. So I think positive thinking allows you to stay in the fight. So what kinds of things have you done to help players of that caliber get prepared for a weekend like the one ahead? Well, I think everything comes down to simplicity. At the end of the day, Derek Jeter probably says it the best. It's still a game. So what I try to do in these circumstances with the top players, the top programs, is a lot of positive reinforcement. We're really motivated in three ways. We're motivated by fear, we're motivated by incentive, or we're motivated by this drive to be great, this intrinsic urge to be great. What I try to do is show our guys our best moments, our, our top successes, uh, being at the top of the podium, winning a national championship, what that felt like, and really focus on how we did it. And we watch a lot of those positive plays. I want to ask you also, though, about you know the ups and lows and downs that we've seen so far in the playoffs, and one of them being with a kicker. And I know that you've worked also with a kicker such as Graham Gano, but there have been many highs and lows. One of the lows being uh, Blair Walsh missing that 27-yarder that would have won the game against the Seahawks. How does Walsh get through the next few months without letting that consume him? Well, I think the reality is, is you wouldn't, again, he's not going to control his future relative to is he going to be on the team or is he not going to be on the team. The simple fact of the matter for Blair is he's a very, very good kicker. He's responsible for what happened. At the end of the day, whether it was the snap, whether it was the hold, something happened, he didn't execute. We all have an internal dialogue with ourselves somewhere between 800 to 1,000 words a minute. At the end of the day, whether I tell you that or another psychological expert tells you that, that's just a fact. That's true. How we communicate with ourselves is 10 times more powerful than how anybody else uh, can affect us around us. Carson Palmer's coach Bruce Arian said that he noticed that Palmer had the face, is what he called it last Saturday when Aaron Rodgers tied the game with his Hail Mary pass. And he said he knew that they would then be okay because he could tell that Palmer had that toughness. Do you think that it makes a difference that we've now seen Carson Palmer win his first playoff game heading into this weekend? I, I think, look, that's going to certainly help. Uh, he's won a playoff game, but Carson Palmer's won a lot of big games. At the end of the day, the NFL is not a free market economy. You end up at the team that selects you. So he ended up at Cincinnati, and his circumstances are what they are. I think if Carson had maybe played in New England, maybe he has three or four Super Bowl championships. The experience in games like this only matters if you tell yourself, well, I've got a couple championships, so it really doesn't matter if we win. Other than that, it's about what we're going to do in the 60 minutes. What is the different approach that it takes to find that key to mental toughness when you're dealing with a guy very early in his career like Cam Newton to one at the end of his career like Peyton Manning? I think for Peyton, everything's about being the best that he can be relative to the circumstances. He's not the same player he was uh, year five, year six, year seven, but he has a different team. He's got a great defense. There's less that maybe he needs to do. Can he be the best that he can be? I think for Cam, Cam is a big game player. In my experience with Cam, getting him ready for the uh, NFL draft and then spending time with him uh, during the lockout, as well as Ken Dorsey, his quarterback coach, Cam loves moments like this. He relishes the big stage. Um, you know, again, pressure brings out the best in him. Trevor Moad, um, a world of insight there. Thank you so much for joining us here on the program.